What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex. In this video, I want to talk about what we can predict from Ghost of Tsushima's story trailer. So yesterday, obviously, we got the release date. We got a brand new trailer. And my God, I mean, it looks really, really good. We'll talk a little bit about the trailer and what I think about it in this video as well. And uh, I'm actually talking about the release date uh, in another video on my second channel. I'll leave a link in the description for my second channel if you guys want to check it out. Um, but in uh, for this main channel, I want to talk about something that, I, you know, when I was watching this the video for the official trailer, again, looked really, really good, or the official story trailer, looked really good. But one of the things I was definitely looking for was what can it tell us about the game? Because if you've been following along, one of the things that I've been very worried about this game, and I'm still to an extent, I mean, I've always been very hopeful. And yeah, again, you guys can just go back to past videos for my thoughts on that. I've always been hopeful. I've always hoped that Sucker Punch can nail it. And I definitely want them to, but very much lack of any information of what we're going to be doing in this game. I mean, yeah, we know the basic plot, right? But I want to know some deeper stuff. And so when watching this trailer, again, the game is coming out in actually under four months. That comes out two days before my birthday, which is an awesome time for me uh, personally. But you know, it, it's coming out very, very soon. I expect we'll see more of like longer gameplay segments instead of just like three minute segments. I'd like to see like 10, 15 minute things or more explanations. But when watching the trailer, I was really thinking, okay, what what is it going to show that we're actually going to be doing in the game? And so it's set up pretty much what happens in this game. Basically, when the enemy attacks and like everything falls apart and then you're kind of doing your, your revenge quest on them, I feel like that, be, that part where they're sailing in the ships and everything gets destroyed, I feel like that's pretty darn early in the game. And then most of the game is that like retribution or re revenge story of your character uh, coming, you know, attacking back, right? And basically killing all of them. Uh, I think that's where the game is setting up. That's more of a story perspective. Again, I think the story will probably be pretty solid. I just hope it's not boring. I hope that the characters have enough life in them that we care and we, that we're like rooting for them. That's the only thing I'm really worried about that. But when the game, or when the trailer started going and it showed more of like the stealth elements, some of them like, and, and more of the setting up the fights, that was more interesting. Very much seemed like there's going to be bases or it, like locations in general where the enemy is that you have to infiltrate to destroy and those seem to me like the side quests like again just like kind of like bases um i guess even a game you could look at like spider-man you know spider-man sometimes will have uh the, like the fisk hideouts and stuff like that i feel like it's in a way things like that where like these are hideouts from the enemy you destroy them you get however many skill points you get this much experience which you can then use uh for this but i feel like that is the biggest thing to me that even though that's a minor thing and even though like we maybe could have predicted something like that that like makes it a little bit like okay I'm starting to get it now. Like it's a big open world, and g throughout this open world, you know, you're gonna be able to ride your horse. It's gonna be great. Like the the grass looks amazing. Um, but you're gonna stumble upon basically hideouts from the enemy that you can choose to attack or choose to just ignore, I guess. Um, and those can maybe be be tied to side quests. Then there'll probably be main quests from certain locations or certain people that you'll have to do things. We saw a lot of stealth uh, combat, basically, like him hiding in the shadows or him in trees jumping down or him in like. Uh, on the other side of a building and stabbing a person through and bringing them through. Things like that are what I wanted to see, honestly, from the beginning. It's definitely good that we are seeing it now. It made it more ex it, it, I wouldn't even say, I was going to say it makes it more exciting. It does, but to me, it just provides a little bit more clarification because, yes, we've seen the sword, you know, the actual, like, main combat, and it looks very solid, and I feel like it's going to have a really, you know, it's maybe like a steep learning curve, but it's going to be really, really good. I, I have a lot of hope and a lot of, like, like, I'm hoping uh, for the the base combat to be, like, the actual sword fighting to be extremely, extremely good. But just seeing that and seeing what we've seen before in the gameplay, it's like, well, or, like, you know, the past E3s that we've seen stuff, like E3 2018, uh, it's like, okay, well, that's a cool, like, eight-minute segment, and we're seeing some of a story mission, and then it kind of jumps around and shows some snippets of some other things we're going to do. But, like, now, again, I mean, we're definitely getting a lot more story elements to it. We're kind of 
setting up what's going to happen to this world and then what's going to happen after it, right? So, I mean, that, that definitely adds more clarification. I feel like because of that, it really starts to set how the game is going to be. Like, maybe there will there'll be some places that haven't been ransacked and attacked yet, and maybe there will be places, I, I'm sure there will be places, that are completely destroyed that maybe maybe even the game can have, like, a system. I, 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 I'm sure there's games that have done it before, but, like, where if you, uh, you know, uh, clear out the enemies something like grows back there right uh, i think horizon zero dawn kind of did that right where if they uh if the if like bandits had taken over like a bandit uh camp and you clear them all out well then basically it fills with a civilization and there's merchants back again and you know it's just a clear spot where you can go back and forth uh, without worry anymore so i feel like stuff like that and you know again i'm only referencing kind of like sony first party suits but i think it's important to do that because i think what's been more clear the past several years especially with sony is that they want them to talk to each other. They want them to bounce ideas. We know like Hideo Kojima, he went to Horizon or he went to Guerrilla Games uh, to talk to them when he was making Death Stranding. And we, I think, well, I mean, specifically maybe we kind of know why because of the tall neck, but uh, they definitely, and he, I think he showed them like his engine, stuff like that. So they're definitely bouncing ideas off. And it's not like these guys don't know other games exist. It's not like they don't know these other games are released, especially when they're in, again, like the first party studios. Um, I'm sure they've played Spider-Man. I'm sure they've played Horizon. And also, again, Infamous. Infamous has done the same thing, kind of, right? With, like, different zones, and there's different, there's, like, small activities you get to do in the zones. I mean, it's pretty much like that for a lot of those kind of open worlds. And I say those kind of as in, like, they're big, but they're not, like, absolutely massive. Say, like, Witcher or, like, Dragon Age just kind of does a little bit different. I wouldn't say Dragon Age is bigger than actually any of the... Uh, like, Spider-Man, I think, is bigger than Dragon Age. But they're in, like, a different realm where it's, like, they're kind of where they have, like... Uh, like And one of the things I do not necessarily love about those kind of games, Infamous, Spider-Man, even Horizon, although Horizon, I think, did it better, is, like, those kind of, like, tasks that just don't mean anything right they're boring they're kind of just there to uh, for you to 100 percent the area and infamous what had something like that you know even back in the day with infamous one and two but i think it was done very darn so like, very solidly i think for the most part so you know, you got to think about them too because they've also, I mean, it's not like they're just comparing themselves to Horizon or to Spider Man. They've done their own stuff. They've had successes in the past and they've had failures in the past. And it seems like, yes, while well, this is a more grounded story, while well, this is a more grounded approach. And again, I really hope that doesn't come back to bite them because while I was interested in what was going on with the story trailer and like what was actually happening, the characters don't seem like they just, you know, are like brimming with life. And. That's fine because I guess of what they're trying to do and maybe I'm not supposed to like again like I'm not expecting them to be dancing through the streets and stuff like that like even like Delson right in infamous uh, second son it's like I'm not expecting this guy to like smirk when he's doing the backflip in midair and then crash to the ground he's the only one in any of those infamous games that ever did that um, but I do like want some sort of personality and it does it to me that my biggest worry if you if you're interested in my opinion of that um was the characters the characters of the story didn't seem to be all that interesting again though it was like a four minute slightly less than four minute trailer so I don't expect to get everything out of it and I'm not going to uh, judge the whole game based off of that but those are just a couple of concerns I have going in but I think it it does it, it doesn't give us like everything we need to do, know about the story I still want to see it I want to see somebody going through the world and saying hey here's the different things you can do in the environment there's there's this kind of side thing you can do and then there's this kind of side thing and this side thing is different for this location than it is for this location and stuff like, like that's what I want to see uh, games like GTA games like Red Dead they normally do stuff like that as they ramp up closer and closer to the game so that's what I'm hope even Days Gone if you actually look back at Days Gone because that's a good example right uh, you know, I mean that game released one year ago it's uh, you know from a studio that was a little less known from Ben Studios but uh, I'd say relatively in the same area especially with what they have to prove I think Sucker Punch has to prove even more than they did with, with Days Gone, um, I would like to see a little bit more. Again, we seem to, I'm starting to see, I think you guys probably can too, right? We're starting to see 
okay, here's how, like, camps work, and here's how stealth can work, and all that kind of stuff. But now let's put it together. Let's add, like, hey, there's there's these things you can upgrade. There's, again, like, this location has these things to do in it, and you're going to be taking quests from these people, and stuff like that. Those are the things that I really still want to see this trailer, just the trailer, just a four-minute trailer, did give us a good amount of info. So imagine what, like, an eight-minute, just straight on, like, okay, someone's just going to play this game for eight to ten minutes. It's an IGN first feature right those stupid things uh, and we're just going to do it and we're going to show you guys 10 minutes of the game and that's it imagine what that could solve it actually I mean it, it's not stupid it is really good it's something that I actually I, I hope IGN does an IGN first for Ghost of Tsushima because I think that would be a really beneficial thing to do so I'm definitely excited the trailer made me more excited the trailer at least I think gave me clarification to a little bit more for combat and like exploration and what we're actually going to be doing in the world it didn't give me everything and there's still definitely some questions but they got three and a half months they have time you know last of us comes out a, a month before it so that's gonna take up people's time uh, you know right before it but i think there's plenty of time to still give us what we still need to know i do think there is more we need to know this is not an example i think of a game that less is more i think actually you need to give us more i think the more you tell us the better and i think they're in a situation where it's like you can't really give us nothing and go into the game with nothing and i've been saying that for a long time Time, and hopefully they continue to give us more as we you know go through these coming months so guys let me know in the comments below what do you think uh, what did you learn from the trailer what do you think about my thoughts of the game based off of this trailer let me know in the comments below make sure you guys subscribe to this YouTube channel podcast now hit that bell icon so you guys know when these videos go up again I'll leave the link for the second channel in the description below uh, I've covered Ghost of Tsushima there I will continue to there and here leading into the game uh, loads more Ghost of Tsushima videos coming as the months progress. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. I hope to see you all on the next video.